Photography was invented in Britain in 1839. Very shortly afterwards, it travelled the long journey across many foreign lands until it reached India. Here it was picked up by British and Indian photographers who were living and working in the country at the time. The first Indian photographer is recorded as Ahmed Ali Khan and he was a Shia Muslim photographer that was working in the city of Lucknow in the early part of the 1800s. This exquisite portrait shows the Queen of Alds. The beautiful hand-painted surround is also hand-gilded with 24 karat gold and it alludes to the richness that was present in India at the time, which no doubt attracted the British. The British chose to use photography as a means to document and dominate the Indian people and landscape. They also used this as a way to produce propaganda to help push forward their agenda to establish the British Raj in India. Photography was used by Indian photographers as a way to document and record their stories, their histories, their narratives, and make them part of a legacy that could last forever. This photograph by Felice Beato, an Italian and British photographer, is one of the first examples of conflict photography and one of the earliest examples of propaganda photography. It is said he asked the guides that were taking him around Lucknow to dig up the skeletal corpses that laid nearby and arrange them in this way. He then photographed the scene and sent it back to London where it was disseminated via etchings in the Illustrated London News. This was a very important photograph in allowing the British to drum up the much needed support they needed back home in order to move forward with their plans for India. The aristocrats of the British Raj cultivated important relationships with rulers and nobility of the princely states of India. This hand-painted photograph is the first example of a collage in the history of photography in India. The scene it depicts is one of the three Durbars arranged by Lord Curzon, a lover of pageantry, excess and lavish lifestyles. The influence of the aristocracy of the British Raj on Indian nobility meant that there was a surge in portraits. Maharaja Sawai Ram Singh II of Jaipur was a keen photographer. These striking self-portraits are the first ever example of self-portraiture in the history of Indian photography, or as we like to call them, the first Indian selfies. The early 20th century saw an explosion of photography in all its forms in India. It was during this period that studio photography really excelled. The tradition of studio photography, which is still alive in India today, allowed India's middle classes and everyday people to document, record and share important and special moments in their life so that they could cherish and remember them forever. An early example of Indian studio photography is this beautiful photograph by Shapur N. Bedwar, the first internationally recognised photographer in the history of India. During the 1890s, he exhibited in London and New York with the Brotherhood of the Linked Ring, a special photographic society. Unfortunately, very few pieces of his work remain today. This exquisite tableau has allusions to the pre-Raphaelite movement that was dominant in art history at the time. The historic and tragic events that led up to occurred during and followed in the immediate aftermath of partition not only helped shape India as a nation, but influenced photography as we know it. During this period, Henri Cartier-Bresson, the Parisian photographer, 
and the most well-known photographer of the time had brought black and white documentary style photography to India. This style of photography was mimicked across all the photojournalists that were working at the time. From Sunil Jana to Margaret Bork White and India's first female press photographer, Homai Virwala. This photograph depicts the crowds on the streets of Delhi the day after independence was announced as a new nation was created. After periods of trauma and conflict, it's human nature to rebuild and to modernise in an attempt to reconcile the tragic events of the past. India was no different. The 1950s saw a different dynamic of photography emerge. This photography documented India as strong, as modern, as unique and here to stay. The 1980s saw an influx of foreign photographers come to India. The most famous of these was Mitch Epstein. He was one of the first Western photographers following partition to show the everyday India. He completely rejected the Orientalist and exotic view of yoga and incense and meditation that had permeated through the West following the partition of India. Today, contemporary photographers are using the same techniques that we've seen over the past 160 years to show photography and India in a new light, illuminating the medium for the world.